I put a GPU on the Steam Deck and it actually works. So the Steam Deck actually has an M.2 port on the back. And this is a concept that I've had since I've been experimenting with putting SSDs and GPUs on my PlayStation 5 via the M.2 port. So I've planned this video ever since the Steam Deck got announced that it had that M.2 port, but my Steam Deck got delayed until Q3 of this year. So I went on eBay and spent Way too much money. You're good with not getting paid this month, right? You're paying me? So that's why we can afford this Steam Deck right here. Don't ask me how much I paid for it. And after I ordered my Steam Deck, I saw that Linus Tech Tips tweeted that he's gonna put a GPU on his Steam Deck, so we had to get this video done ASAPP. So the concept is remarkably simple. You put this M.2 to PCI Express adapter into the M.2 port that's on the Steam Deck. You can't use the USB-C port that's on the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck doesn't have Thunderbolt, so external GPU enclosure theoretically won't work. I don't have one to test it out, but the USB-C port is only 20 gigabits per second. And typically for your external GPU enclosures, you need 40 gigabits per second. So the concept is simple. Plug this in, plug GPU in, display out, game using 3080 Ti and whatever else. You know what else is simple? Today's video sponsor, Dot Tech Domains. It's got a cut to me with a completely different hair color. We raised $41,000 to cure my son's rare genetic disorder and I have blonde hair now. Make all the M&M jokes that you want. Is the LTT logo still there? Barely. LTTstore.com. Let me tell what you're going to get with .tech domains and break the code 2.0, which is happening right now. We talked about this in our last video, but break the code is the event where you can put your noggins to the test, complete some intense puzzles. Break the code 2.0 here in 22 has a whole 90s nostalgia theme, including the prizes that you could potentially win. There's an exclusive Keanu Reeves signed copy of the Matrix at stake, a James Bond GoldenEye weapon system. And then you could also get cool modern things like a customized MacBook or a customized I set up for the best code breaker built with the latest equipment valued at $12,000. You know you're getting good stuff from Dot Tech Domains and all it takes is you putting your brain to the test on their website. If you go to go.tech forward slash UFD, you can participate in Break the Code 2022, get part of the fun experience, make sure that you're enjoying yourself, but then you could also potentially win some really good stuff. Big thanks to Dot Tech Domains for sponsoring today's video. So it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than just hooking it up. We have an external power supply which has a jumper on it, which means as soon as we flick the switch, this is going to power the graphics card, which should mean we have power. Now I have to uninstall the M.2 drive that's in here. And this is actually hosting the SteamOS operating system. Now I've already gone ahead and configured Windows on this micro SD card because I'm fairly confident that the best shot of this working is on Windows. But in case we do see success here, I do want to try to get SteamOS put on a micro SD card and see if that works as well. But one step at a time here, let's go with what I think will work first. So the M.2 drive that's here on the Steam Deck is actually a 2230 in size, but the actual M.2 adapter is a 2280. So you see it is quite long. And then when we plug it in, there's kind of like no way to close this, which is fine in a dock scenario. It just means that you'd be popping off the back panel of the Steam Deck every single time. Is this 100% practical? No, but is it gonna work? I really, really freaking hope so. So I'm gonna set this down in a way that like that port doesn't wiggle and it stays in there. Now for the GPU. RTX 3080 Ti gets slotted in. Now we need power for the actual PCI Express riser and then the two A pins for the 3080 Ti. Now it's time for display port out into the monitor. So hopefully we get some display and then we flick on the power supply first to enable power to the GPU. Then we boot up the Steam Deck into the BIOS. GPU turned on as soon as I did that. <gasps> What? It's working with the 3080 Ti? I tested this before this video went live. It wasn't working. What is happening? I was expecting to give up on this. This is a new way of the video. <laughs> I'm so confused. I don't have a keyboard or USB dock. We need that. We have to go get a USB dock. Anyways, let's press A. It should boot into Windows. I was testing this last night when I first got the Steam Deck. And when I plugged in the 3080 Ti, it wouldn't even display this screen. Like it was just black. It wouldn't work. And it kept boot looping and it wouldn't let me get in in anywhere. And now it's working, sort of. So we're going to leave this right here because I don't know what's going on. We're going to go get a USB-C hub so I can actually use a mouse and keyboard. And then we'll, we'll come back to this whenever we get back and see if it's actually booted into Windows at that point. We're just going to leave it. Hopefully it doesn't explode. So that took like an hour and you can see that we're still not booted in the windows at all, but now we actually have a whole USB dongle so I could use a keyboard. Kyler suggested that maybe all it needs is for me to hit enter on the keyboard. We'll find out. Enter. Nothing. 
What happens if I turn this off? The Steam Deck's still making noise. Okay, the Steam Deck's now off. Let's try it again. Okay, keyboard and mouse are working. That's perfect, GPU turned on. Steam Deck made its noise. This means it actually registers the GPU, which it was not doing last night when I tested everything out. I wonder if I turn it off, does it boot into Windows at all? Or is it a corrupted SD at this point? Let me just try to get it working on the Steam Deck by itself. Okay, it boots into Windows on the Steam Deck, no problem. But what happens if I turn on the GPU now? All of the display out's still here. Let's go to Device Manager and see what it's registering for the GPU. Okay, the display adapter is just the APU and that's fine. It's saying it has an unknown device for the PCI Express. Let's try to install NVIDIA drivers and see what happens. The driver could not find compatible graphics hardware. So I'm curious, what if I restart? Like it shuts down, it tries to come back in with the GPU. Is it gonna push through the graphics card to the main display or is it still gonna be on the Steam? Deck. Okay, the Steam Deck just turned off, fan turned off. It's coming up here, it's launching into it, and it looks like it's gonna get stuck here. But this is new. It didn't used to have both. Weird, very weird. So I've revealed before that I already tried this and I know how this goes down. So let's let's get the 3080 Ti off of this because it's, it's clearly not doing what it's supposed to do at this point. It's not registering the NVIDIA device for the Steam Deck. Unless there's something I'm missing in the BIOS. Let me, let me, let me check stuff in the BIOS. So what do we have? The EFI boot devices, and this is an inside H2 BIOS. Boot option menu. I don't think there's anything that I can do right now. I might be able to configure a few more things later, but let's go ahead and let's switch over to the AMD card because the AMD card is what actually worked last night. I actually like booted up straight into Windows, no problem, no issues. RX 580, this is the highest end AMD GPU I actually own. We had a 6900 XT at one point, but then I gave it away on our previous charity stream. So if there's any uh, GPU companies that want to hook me up with another 6900 XT to test with the Steam Deck, I'd, uh, I'd mightily appreciate it. Or NVIDIA, you want to work on a bias support for the Steam Deck? AMD GPU works flawlessly. This should boot straight into Windows. Yep, didn't give us the thing. Now it's just booting in. I wonder if the NVIDIA GPU is just like an undetected device on the PCI Express port. Like the BIOS just doesn't know what to do with it. Because it's not an operating system issue because we're not even booting into Linux at this point. It's simply just the GPU won't work. And it, even when we were in Windows, it said it was like unknown PCI Express device. It just doesn't know what to do with it. AMD works natively, which makes sense because it's an AMD SOC. So it already has support for AMD CPU and GPU. So it just said it restart required for the PCI bus. So it's it's detecting something hopefully properly. Performance, yeah, it detects the RX 580. It's right there. It doesn't detect the other Vega graphics natively. So it's not showing the RDNA 2 integrated GPU on here in task manager, at least. Let's go to device manager, see what what Windows is showing here. I installed the drivers for this. I guess it's having issues, but it is showing the 580, no problem. Yeah, we've got AMD drivers. So the 3080 Ti didn't work. I wonder maybe is it because it's drawing too much power? So let's try a lower end NVIDIA card. I've got an RTX 3050 right here. Let's see if this potentially boots it. Fan spinning, we got RGB. This means it has to be faster. Does it work? No, same issue. Okay, I have one more NVIDIA GPU that we can try. We're gonna try a 1060 to see if maybe it's just the newest cards. Nah, I think it's all NVIDIA cards. It doesn't like it. I'm disconnecting potentially blocking drivers. I wonder if the BIOS is like straight up blocking NVIDIA GPUs. But yeah, it looks like we're just having the same issue regardless of what NVIDIA graphics card we use. It's all, it's all blocked. So the 580 was the highest end AMD GPU I had, but I feel like that's not strong enough over the integrated GPU on the Steam Deck. So we actually found that at Best Buy, they had this one in stock, a 6600 XT. Hopefully that means that the GPU short which is getting better, but now this is definitely a higher end card, right? Like the same architecture, RDNA 2 can support ray tracing. It's at least somewhat worthwhile upgrade versus the 580 and it's modern. So let's see if the 6600 XT is natively supported. Got spinny fans. Oh no, it's outputting here. That's different. The fans spun up, so it's like it's being detected. I'm just gonna make sure like everything's connected properly. Oh, that's not good. It like fell out as soon as I opened it. I wonder if that wasn't fully connected. We've been moving things too much. There we go. <laughs> it's a little tricky. We should put like double-sided tape so that it doesn't jiggle. Enter. Is it gonna boot into Windows? Yes, yes it will. 6600 XT natively supported. I'm so bummed I don't have a 6900 XT. <laughs> But that's okay because we're using a Ryzen APU. So if we try to do too much with the CPU that's baked in, we're gonna be bottlenecked quite a bit. I think at least with the 6600 XT, we might be able to go for 1440p and maybe even see some 60 FPS there. So let's, let's try that out. So uh, I put in the 6600 XT and it's been trying to boot into Windows for 15 minutes and now it has this really slow dot. I don't know what's going on. It's not working.
thing. I tried to restart it, still didn't work. I'm actually curious if we broke something, so we gotta put the 580 back in and see if that works. So we corrupted Windows with swapping out all the GPUs to not have to reinstall Windows. Will you give me USB? It does. Okay, cool. So boot from the USB. Okay, so you can't see the SD card. I can't install to the SD card from the USB. There are drivers. Hold on, hold on. I did download drivers. Oh no, it's not unzipped. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna go unzip it on a different <laughs> computer. So we reinstalled Windows and now everything's working fine. It turns out that wasn't a problem. So the 6600 XT is being picked up perfectly by Windows, MSI Afterburner, and actually we have a plan for running an NVMe drive plus a GPU at the same time. So get subscribed for that, my friends. So looking at GPU-Z, we are definitely going to run into a bottleneck. This GPU can support PCI Express 4.0 at eight lanes, but we're only running PCI Express 3.0 by four lanes. So this is going to be bottlenecked to Heckin' back because the M.2 port on the Steam Deck just isn't fast enough. So honestly, there's no real reason to go above, honestly, probably a 6500 XT since that's the max that that graphics card can do in the first place. Going to a 6900 XT, while well, that would be fun, is too much for the Steam Deck to handle. It's only four gigabytes per second, which would be 32 gigabits per second, which would be slower than Thunderbolt, but it's faster than the USB-C port that's on the Steam Deck. So this is as fast as you're gonna get it. So while we're here, we should play some games. I think that's that's what we should do. We got Steam open. Let's load up some Elden Ring. So we should see what frame rate we'll get at what resolution and what settings. No maidens? Look, we got a white screen for the Eldens. Are the maidens coming? Is it happening? Okay, we're running at 60. I like it. Oh, this is rough. Okay, all right, we're at like 30 F. Oh man, it looks great. I wonder if this is running at 1440. My guess is yes. Yeah, it's running at 1440 high. The 6600 XT is running at like 80%. So it's just the severe bottleneck of PCI Express. The CPU is pegged at 100%. It is not liking this. That's why it's going so spicy. Let's shut down Elden Ring. Let's try an easier game. So the graphics card is definitely working. It was rendering that completely. Yeah, the GPU was averaging between 60 and 70% usage. It was at, it was being bottlenecked by the CPU. The CPU was at 100% the entire time. And it was running about 30, 35 FPS on Elden Ring. All right, we're at like 165 FPS in the menu. That's not bad. We can do ray tracing. Let's do medium. Let's see what it does. 1440p medium. 60? Really? But that's still crazy, right? Video 1440p medium. Wow, okay. So the GPU actually is fully working right now. This is fully playable. Honestly, I would only expect to hook this up to a 1080p monitor realistically, especially with the PCI Express bottleneck. Let's do 1080p. Oh, still 40 FPS. It might be CPU bottlenecked here. That might be the what's going on. Yeah, it's CPU bottlenecked. So we actually might even stay at a roughly similar frame rate if we hit up 4K. Yeah, 1440p ran as well as 1080p. So let's just go back up. Let's go high, see what happens. Oh, that's 37. 35. I mean, this is still playable. Like if you were gonna play on the Steam Deck, you were gonna expect 30 FPS in some modes anyways. This looks really good. Let's go ray tracing medium. Let's not go crazy here. It's only a 6600 XT. Doesn't like that, 20. We're at 20 FPS, 1440p ray traced. That motion blur is huge. You see that? This is unplayable at this point. I can't even drive straight with what's going on. It's laggy. Let's go 1440p, let's go lowest. There we go. Few hiccups, few like not working perfectly. We're getting closer to 60 here, like 50 to 60? I think this proves it. The GPU works. Like you would not hit these numbers on the Steam Deck. The 6600 XT is working perfectly. Let's try Elden Ring again. Okay, 38, 40 FPS. Okay, yeah, we're at like 45, 1440p low. Get up to 60 if you're not looking at anything important. 1080p low, still, it's CPU bottlenecks. I just set it to 1080p high. Yeah, it's the exact same. Go 1080p maximum, 50 FPS. Yeah, that PCI Express throughput is just, seems to be the bottleneck here. This honestly isn't that bad. This is playable. Steam Deck works with the GPU. So that, in my opinion, is an unequivocal success. A GPU will work with the Steam Deck, which I think just hits Valve's point that this is a console that also is a computer. You can use it for whatever you want, but you can also just use it as a regular handheld console in case you wanna be on the go. Now, there are a lot of questions that I still have about things I wanna discover here. Could we potentially run a GPU while also running the M.2 SSD? What is the battery life performance? Is there a way to configure the BIOS to actually support NVIDIA GPU? 
GPUs. Can we take it with the GPU on the go somehow? Could we potentially 3D print a better backplate to allow for an M.2 extension to go through? There's a million different things and a million different ways we can take this, but proof of concept is solid. And I'm actually really thrilled that the 6600 XT ended up working. We also need to check and see if it actually works in Steam OS, but I feel like that's a project for a different day. But if you want to see me get crazy with the PlayStation 5 like this, go check out this video right here.